So the example that we did in the previous section with acetic acid and acetate was actually a buffer solution. I didn't tell you that, but that's what it was. So let's talk about buffers. A buffer solution is one that resists pH change by neutralizing any added acid or base. And the way you make a buffer solution is you mix a weak acid with its conjugate base, which is what we did in the previous example. We mix acetic acid with sodium acetate, or you can mix a weak base with its conjugate acid. So, in order for this to work, you need to have a significant amount of both of these components, of your weak starting substance and its conjugate. So, of your conjugate pair, you need significant amounts. So, what you want is your ratio between your acid and your conjugate base and again you can say base and conjugate acid um, works that the same way there all right is needs to be between 0 0.1 and 10. now if you think of this on a logarithmic scale you're going to say oh dr b that is two powers of 10 right so that's two ph units now, the concentration of each component needs to be greater than the Ka value by at least 100. We like that because then we can use x is small. Okay, so that, so that means m over k is always going to be greater than 100. So we can use X is small, that helps. Now, the common ion effect <clears throat> is what we just experienced in that previous example. And it means a solution that has two substances that share a common ion. So both acetic acid and sodium acetate have acetate in them, that is their anion. So the anion is the same that actually causes a decrease in the ionization of the weak acid or the weak base. That's according to Le Chatelier's principle because if you want something to dissociate and then you already add a product for something you would dissociate into, that's going to push the reaction to the right instead of letting it go to the left. So you're going to have a decrease in how much ionization that you get.